there's a protein that I want to try to get bacteria to make for me. So we call that bacterial expression. And so I don't know if it's going to work, so I want to give it options. So I'm asking it an important question. TB or not TB? So by TB, I mean terrific broth, and by not TB, I'm giving it the option of LB, um, lysogeny broth. So these are two different bacterial media, um, so different growth food for bacteria. So let's talk a bit about bacterial media. Biochemistry, we use harmless bacteria to do a lot of work for us. This starts often with DNA copying. So what we can do is we can stick the genetic recipe for making some a protein into a circular piece of DNA called a plasmid. And then we stick that plasmid into bacterial cells in a process called transformation. And another great, one of the great things about bacteria is that you can use antibiotic selection. So in addition to putting your genetic recipe into that plasmid, you can stick an antibiotic resistance gene. Then if you grow the bacteria in the presence of that antibiotic, only bacteria that actually have your plasmid will be able to grow and they'll make lots of copies. So, DNA, so bacteria can be really good for making lots of copies of DNA. And then, of course, they can also be good for making protein from that DNA that you put in. And so typically we do this in different types of cells, and we can do things like induced expression, so have them make the protein on demand, as we talked about with the IPDG um, induction system. But bacteria won't work for free. We have to feed them. Here's the kitchen where um, our wonderful media maker makes their food. So media, what's that? Oh, that's just what we call their food. So we call their food media. So I guess that you could say I'm a media influencer if I get you to change your ideas about bacterial food after this post. Anyways, there are different types of media that are good for different purposes. These are a few that you might see, SOB, TB, and LB. But LB is this main one, so we'll start talking with that, and then we'll compare other um, types of media to it. So in addition to seeing um, LB in bottles and flasks, you often see it in Petri dishes. So Petri dishes are these little plastic um, dishes that we can fill with a sugar called agar um, to make, a, and so a mix of like agar and often LB mixed with antibiotic, will make this gel. And then um, this, um, you can like spread bacteria over that gel and the bacteria that take hold will grow on top of themselves and form these gloopy things called colonies. Cool side note. Um, so apparently the first gelling agent that was tried was by um, Robert Koch in 1881. And he tried gelatin, but it wasn't very useful because the bacteria ate it and it also melted too easily. But the wife of one of his associates, Angelina Fanny Elshamus, suggested he try agar, and it worked really well, so you have her to think. And the bacteria didn't eat it, um, and it stayed solid, and the bacteria survived. So now, from then on, we've used agar in our gels, and it's like this common staple of lab life. So you also see it in these big flasks, which we use when we do protein expression. We have these cabinets full of media for whenever we want to use it. So what's in LB? What's the magic recipe? So one of the main things is tryptone. Tryptones are just a mix of protein pieces that come from chopping up proteins. And so tryptone is a type is the specific name we give for peptones that come from chopping up the protein casein, um, which is a common protein in milk, and um, when this is chopped up by pancreatic enzymes, we call it tryptone. Um, so tryptone is just this mix of peptides, so little protein pieces, um, that provide the amino acids, so the protein letters, um, that the bacteria can use to make new proteins and get um, other resources. What else? Yeast extract. So this is, in addition to making proteins, they'll, and actually make those proteins, they'll need like, things like salts and vitamins, minerals, etc. And so yeast extract is basically whatever was in the yeast when you break them open. And so if it's good enough for the yeast, it's good enough for the bacteria, hopefully. There are also salts, so sodium chloride. Um, so some of the different recipes vary in terms of how much sodium chloride they have, but the salt is good for osmotic balance. So basically, 
regulating how much water is in the cells so that they don't burst or like shrivel up or anything. Um, and some of the recipes also have glucose, so um, blood sugar. So Bertani's recipe uses glucose. Speaking of all these people that I mentioned here, so sometimes you'll see um, lysogeny brought, so sometimes you'll see LB um, called like Luria broth or L Lennox broth or Luria and Bertani broth or whatever. But it actually originally, no one's going to like probably get mad at you if you call it that, but it actually originally stands for lysogeny broth. Um, so Bertani, um, in 1951, he published the recipe, and he called it lysogeny broth because he was using it when he was studying this process called lysogeny, whereas when um, a bacteria infecting virus called a bacteriophage, or typically we just call it a phage, inserts its own DNA into the bacteria's DNA, and then it kind of like hides out until times are right, and then it enters this lytic phase and cuts itself out and bursts open from the cell and stuff. So that's where the LB comes from, lysogeny broth. But LB is great, so LB is great for a lot of things, but it's not great for everything. So let's compare some other media that you might want to use for different purposes. One of these is TB, so this is probably the other one that I use the most. So TB stands for terrific broth, um, and it can be terrific for great yields um, for proteins because it has additional yeast extract and tryptone, so it's like a richer media and it has these pH buffers, these potassium, um, these potassium phosphate um, buffers, which are good for balancing the pH and preventing cell death. 2XYT um, stands for two times the amount of um, yeast extract as the usual TLB, and so this could be good if you ha you're doing like long growth times. So SOB and SOC, so these are good for DNA making because they have magnesium sulfate. And so magnesium is used by DNA polymerase, so the DNA copier, um, and some other DNA work, some other um, proteins that work with DNA. And they're also richer than LB, they have more of the tryptone. SOC in particular also has glucose, which makes it good for post-transformation recovery. So after you stick the DNA into cells um, in, in the process called transformation, um, so that's pretty hard on the cells, so they need to recover. And so glucose is good for that, kind of like how you might drink one of those like gel sugar pack things after you run a marathon. So those were all examples of what we call undefined media. So they have batch-to-batch -batch variability. So whatever those pancreatic enzymes chopped up from the casein and the tryptone and whatever happened to be in the yeast when you got the yeast extract. So there's a lot of variability. And so usually this isn't really a big product problem, but sometimes it can be. And so there's also defined media, like M9 minimal media, that have com constant components. So they're like made synthetically um, so basically just from their raw ingredients. So you add a specific amount of sodium phosphate, potassium phosphate, ammonium chloride, sodium chloride, essential, um, that sort of thing. But you may need to add ingredients. So now I need to introduce a couple of terms. So a couple of terms you might hear are, are oxytrophic and autotrophic. So autotrophic means that you can make it yourself. And oxotrophic means that you can't, and so you need it to um, supplied. And if it's essential, then you can only grow if it is supplied. So say you have bacteria that require coffee to grow. And an autotrophic bacteria would be able to make its own coffee, so it could grow even if there wasn't coffee in the media. But an oxytrophic bacteria won't grow unless there's co you give it coffee. Um, so this can be used for selection. So we, um, sorry, this can be used for selection. So if like you have media, if you have bacteria that only that need his, the amino are missing something from making the amino acid histidine, um, and so they'd be oxytrophic for histidine. So if you don't provide histidine in the food, then they won't be able to grow. But if you do provide it in the food, they will be able to grow. And so this can be used to select for only bacteria that have the ability to make histidine. And this is actually the basis 
for the um, Ames test for mutagenicity. You can also add things like antibiotics to plates. Um, and so this allows for selection. So as we saw before, only bacteria that have the plasma containing the antibiotic resistance gene will be able to grow in the presence. We can also add things to our media for screening. With screening, all of the bacteria, at least the ones that have the antibiotic resistance gene, will be able to grow, but they'll look differently if they have some property, like the presence of an insert, as we saw with blue-white screening. And so with selection, you're actually weeding out ones you don't want, and with screening, you're kind of just flagging them. Such as, um, so with blue-white screening, if you're gene got into the plasmid, it'll disrupt the gene for making this um, blue product, and so you won't see that blue product and the colonies will appear white, whereas other colonies will appear blue. All this food um, has to be sterilized before we give it to the bacteria because we want to make sure that only the bacteria we want to grow will actually grow. So this is the an autoclave, so it's this high pressure um, high heat sterilizing machine. Um, so it's kind of like a super high pressure oven or sauna that sterilizes with steam. Um, you'll see this tape that we put on top of the bottles. It has this, this is the indicator tape and it turns black when it gets hot. Um, and so this tells you that the, um, that the autoclave at least got really hot. And so your thing is probably sterile. I've always really wanted to make like joke, them to make like joke things that you put on the um, tape so that jokes come up or some fun facts or something, but usually it's just stripes or the brand name. And so that's basically all I wanted to tell you about media and so hope that helps.